911, what's the nature of your emergency? Welcome back to the Tactical Living Podcast. I'm your host, Ashley Walton. In today's episode, we're going to talk about getting uncomfortable, and I am definitely going to be getting uncomfortable in today's episode, so just sit back, relax, and enjoy today's content. I'm very fortunate to have such a strong friend and family unit, and I'm very fortunate to have the relationships that I have with people all across the world. And for Clint and I, this actually started when we started to travel internationally. Some of our greatest relationships have come out of these countries that us as Americans have traveled to together unknowingly at the time. And then we've come home with just such prosperous and rich and beautiful friendships on the backside of that. Now, we never expected for that to be a consequence of international travel. And then when I started to tip my toes into the realm of social media, If you've been listening for a while, then you know that I was never comfortable having a social media account. I've always been an incredibly private person, but something happens when you start a business and inevitably social media becomes one of your biggest ways to be able to reach people all across the world. And when I decided to do that, again, I never expected to cultivate such amazing friendships and relationships with people from all walks of life. And not only that, but maybe this is the same for you. I never expected to learn from people on on such a level by being able to not internationally travel and to just communicate with people on a very human level once I meet them and then kind of pull them off of social media. And what I mean by that is we take somebody that we might see something attractive online and maybe it's attractive in the sense of the physical looks. Maybe it's attractive in the sense of the content that they're posting. Maybe it's attractive because of the training that they create and they, they publish on a regular basis. But we find something attractive. And if we're brave enough, then we might start to engage with that person. And going a, a step further, we might start to drop into their, their DMs, right? Inbox them, email them even. And then maybe you start to create this conversation with this once stranger and that starts to create a relationship and that relationship evolves and maybe you exchange cell phone numbers and maybe one day you get to see each other in person. If this sounds far-fetched, this has happened to me and continues to happen to me on a regular basis. Now, I'm sharing this because it isn't comfortable for me to talk about my biggest fears And the reason it's not comfortable, it's because one of my biggest fears is most certainly not something that I'm proud of. And it's embarrassing for me to admit openly. One of my biggest fears, apart from earthquakes, which everybody knows, is actually miniature people, small people, midgets. It petrifies me to the point of Clint and I having to have left concerts before. We've had to leave casinos before. We've had, I, I, I cannot explain to you how deep of a fear this is apart from knowing and understanding the physical response that I have when I do come into contact with somebody of short stature. And I never understood why. And I've journaled about this. I've meditated on this. And I've tried to understand more about myself for many, many years, I never had some dramatic experience. I didn't have something something happen to where any of this even makes sense. However, it's a very real thing for me. And again, not being proud of it, not, not having it as something that I want to openly talk about because in no way does my fear mean that I want somebody to take offense to, to me and whatever it is internally that I have going on that I'm openly still working through and simply because I don't understand it. I don't know what the root of it is. However, by being able to cultivate such friendships with people from all walks of life, all across the world, my now best friend, she actually has her PhD in psychology. We've known each other now for well over a year. And for the very first time, this topic of conversation came up between us. Now, I have never been close with a female in the way that she and I are close. She she mimics me and I the same, and I'm so honored to have the relationship that I do with her. And I felt like we've shared everything, right? That's what best friends do. 
However, this was one of those rare times when this just had never come up. And I believe that it's in part on me, not something that I thought of openly sharing with her, because again, it's not something that I'm proud to admit. But it came up last week, and we were talking about it. And again, because she knows what I believe to be everything else, she starts asking questions. And she tells me at the onset, like, Ashley, we need to start to explore this, (laughs) right? That's the beauty of having friends who work in the personal development space. So I was open to it, and she starts prying a little bit. And she asked me her very first question, do you have a fear of dolls? And I said, well, not exactly. I was never a doll kind of girl. I grew up with five brothers. I remember every year my cousin would buy me a Barbie, but I was never allowed to play with it. It was one of those that was a collector's item. I still have them in the box. I never asked for dolls when I was a girl. I was I was more into being creative, making things with beads and crafts and reading and drawing and singing and and all of those types of things. I never asked for dolls. So that was a first realization for me. And I was never a girl, a little girl who asked my mom and dad or Santa for a toy doll growing up. And there's something there. And that was a realization in and of itself. And then I remembered when I was younger, my nana, you might call her grandma, gave me this porcelain doll that she brought to my home from Canada. And I took that thing and I put it inside of the closet, never took it out of the box. And not only did I put it inside the closet, but I turned the box in a way to where nobody could see the face of that doll. Going even a step further, I took my clothes and I covered that doll. And then I told her, you know what, I, I actually I told her the story of what happened with this doll. And she says, there's something there, Ashley. And she says, you know what, there might even be a link between your fear and you not wanting to have any children. And we left it at that. She stepped away from the conversation and she encouraged me to explore that. So I've been journaling. I journal nightly and I've been journaling on those components And how integral they all seem and how I've been kind of racking my brain trying to understand this fear and and the, the nonsense. It's complete nonsense to be fearful of another human being in this sense. But I never picked up on those associations. But because she knows me so well, she knew all of those other things. She did right away. And that's based on her own experience. That's based on everything that she has been through personally and everything that she has experienced on a professional level too. And I'm bringing this story up. I'm sharing it with you because I want you to know how important it is for us to all be able to open ourselves up to the opportunity of friendship and relationships and to be able to cultivate them. And it takes time. A relationship and a friendship is no different than purchasing a house. Purchasing a house, we have to work, we have to make our payment, we have to do the upkeep, it takes time. And it's exactly the same thing with our relationships. Whether this is your intimate relationship at home, or whether it's the relationship that you cultivate with business colleagues, people that you work with, maybe you patrol with them, or friends that you either have or want to have, that you meet somewhere in cyberspace, that might one day be one of the most important people in your world. And how beautiful is it to experience somebody in that way and to have them show you yourself in a different light? I believe it's very important. It's one of the only things that we have is our voice, our ability to be heard, our ability to be seen. But chances are, if you're feeling like you're not heard or seen, it's probably time to strengthen your tribe. It's probably time to work on that unit inside of your kingdom. If you need any help doing that, if you need to know what the best way is for you to be able to communicate with someone you've never actually met before, maybe it's a maybe it's a, a partner, a potential partner. Maybe it is just a friend. Maybe it's somebody who you think is so far out of your league on a business level that there's no way you could ever get into touch with them. Well, guess what I have? I would love to help you. Reach out to me on Facebook at Ashley Walton. And know that today I am sending you the longest, tightest hug from my home to yours. And even if it's not your Friday, I hope that you are having an incredible, incredible day.